hello, hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Miss Glow Glow and the Motivators. Today I am back with a spiritual motivational video. Let me grab my water. Grab my water bottle. Move my back scratch out the way. So let's get into this video. Before we even get started with uh, what we're going to be discussing today, I literally want to uh, just say a word of prayer and invite the Lord onto this platform. You guys, bow your head, close your eyes, whatever you're going to do to be comfortable, and pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you for bringing me into another year. I thank you for another day's grace and mercy. I thank you for each and every member of my family. I ask that you bless every one of them, Lord, according to your will. I ask that you order our footsteps in your word today, God. I ask that you keep us rooted, grounded, surrounded, and protected in the love of Jesus. I ask that you continue to put a hedge of protection over each and every one of my grandkids, my great-grandkids. Keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And then, dear Heavenly Father, don't forget about my subscribers, my followers, my friends, my family on YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. I ask that you bless every one of them in a special way, God. I ask that you reach forth your long arm and touch them, Lord, with your anointing power. Father God, I ask that you keep us with a right mind, Lord. Keep us with a mind that stayed on you. Order our steps in your word today, Lord. Give us strength to resist temptation, God, in the name of Jesus. And I ask that every word that I read today, every word that come out of my mouth, God, I ask that you let it be words of encouragement, uplifting, motivation. And I ask, God, that you bless your word and let your word be a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers, listeners, and learners. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So, yes, guys, before we get started, I want to read Psalms 91. And unless I'm doing a mukbang, I'm going to try to incorporate Psalms 91 in every video. So, be ready, be prepared. If you don't want to hear me read Psalms 91, you know, mute your uh, TV, your phone, or whatever it is until I'm done. And then come back and finish watching the video because the word of God is always a blessing. Okay, so let's go. Psalms 91. The theme of Psalms 91 is God's protection in the midst of danger. This is God letting us know that he's protecting us at all times. Okay, he doesn't promise a world free from danger, but he does promise his help whenever we face danger. So we must remember that. Let's go. Psalms 91. First scripture. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowlers and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flyeth by day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee, meaning near, near thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling place, meaning come near your home. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. I want God to keep me in all my ways. Yes, I want him to give the angels charge over my life. They shall bear thee up in thy hand, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, 
and the young lamb and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is your prayer of protection. Psalms 91. Everybody that got a Bible, that got a phone with the Bible app on it, should incorporate Psalms 91 in your life every day. Every day. Now, it's this Psalms 91, it don't, it's not, it don't tell us in the Bible who read it. It's, it's anonymous. But whoever read it, they know how to pray for protection over their life, over their family, their homes, their going ins, and their coming out. And God said, what you ask, just what you ask from me, that will I give. That's amazing, guys. That is just amazing. But it tells us in the footnotes that God is a refuge. God is our refuge. God is, he is a shelter when we are afraid and when we need it. And then it said the writer's faith in God as a protector could carry him through all the dangerous fears of life. And he said this should be a picture of our trust in God also. So this is good. Guardian angel. Every one of us have a guardian angel. And it tells us that in Psalms 91 11, one of the functions of the angels is to watch over believers. In Hebrew 1 and 14, there are examples of guardian angels in the scripture. So if you want to read about guardian angels in the scripture, you can read uh, 1 Kings, uh, Daniel, Matthew, Luke, and Acts. That's it. Now we're going to get to what, what my topic is I want to talk about. And this is something familiar that we done talked about already. So let me say once again, Happy New Year to everybody. God bless. I hope everybody have a blessed, prosperous day today. And I hope you keep on living and moving in the will of God. Because there's no safety if you're not in God's will. I thank God for being saved today, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized. Got my mind on Jesus and Jesus on my mind. I'm trying to make it to 100 because 99 and a half just ain't going to do for me. I want to run the race and I want to finish the race. And I want y'all to run it and finish it with me. And until my time in, I'm always going to share this word with y'all. Spread this love. Because it's enough of it to go around. So, like y'all know, I write everything down. So, okay. Today, I want to be talking, coming to you guys. We're going to be coming from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 7. And the topic that I uh, want to talk about is, in the Bible, the topic is, God said unto us, live. But my topic I want to talk about is, that I'm going to use as my topic. Control your tongue. Let's go to Ezekiel uh, 16. We're going to read from the first to the seventh verse. And we're going to read in the King James first, okay? And it says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Came unto me, saying, Son of man, Cause Jerusalem to know her abomination, and say, Thus said the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother was a Hittite. And as for thy nativity in the day thou was born, thy neighbor was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None eyes pitied thee, no eyes pitied thee, 
to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. I have caused thee to multiply as the buds of the field, and thou hast increased thine waxing great, that thou art come to excellent ornament. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. We're going to stop right there. And the topic I chose for that today is control your tongue. Why did I choose control your tongue? Because he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. When you learn how to control this right here, you can control your life. The Bible said, Proverbs 13 and 3. Let's pull that up. Proverbs 13 and 3. See, sometimes you got to get, you got to put the word, you got to use the word to, to help people. You know, because there's a lot of people being being deceived with this word, with the word, not this word, but being deceived by other people saying they come in the name of Jesus Christ with these different Bibles and stuff, and they twisting and turning their word to fit their life. You can't do that. The Bible in the Bible, God said, don't add to and don't take from. Okay, so Proverbs thirteen and three, it says, "He that keepeth his mouth." Keep it his life, but he that open it wide, his lips shall have destruction. Now, the footnotes tells us you have not mastered self control if you do not control what you say. There is no way possible that you have mastered self control over your body now if you, if you. Do not control what you say. Words can cut and it can destroy. And James recognized this truth when he stated, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. That's in James 3 and 5. If you wish to be self-controlled, begin with your tongue. Begin with your tongue. Stop and think before you react. Or speak. If you can control this small but powerful member, you can control the rest of your body. You hear me? You can control the rest of your body. That's said in. Now, back to my writing. The topic I chose is control your tongue. Why did I choose say that? Why did I choose that topic? Because he that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. But he that open wide his lips shall have destruction. If you have not mastered, listen, you have not mastered self-control. A lot of times we think we have self-control over this body. We don't. We have not mastered self-control if you have not control what you say. You ain't master self-control of your body if you can't control what you say. Because mm -mm. when we get mad, we lash out. We go to saying stuff that we don't mean. And the thing about it is when you say it, you can't take it back. Mm -mm. It ain't no taking it back. You can ask somebody to forgive you or say you sorry. But sometimes when we say we sorry, it's just what we say. Sorry, we just be sorry. So, James in James 3 and 5, it says the tongue is a little member and can boast great things. If we wish to have self-control, we must begin with our tongue. 
We have to stop and think before we act or speak. If we can learn to control this small little part of our member of our body, right there. If we can learn to control this small part, yeah. this small, excuse me, y'all, I don't know where this building come from, this small part but powerful member of our body, we can then control the rest of our body with the help of Jesus Christ. The Bible speaks about the four tongues. Let's get, we're going to get deeper to this. The four tongues. The Bible speaks about the four tongues. Uh, let me see. Let me see, can I find them? They in here. I got them. I think it said in 26. A chart in 26. Yeah. Now, if you want to know about the four tongues, the four tongues is in the 26 Proverbs. It talks about the four tongues. Now, the four tongues, it says, number one, the control tongue. Think before speaking, know when to be silenced, and give wise advice. That's, that's the, the first tongue called the controlled tongue. One, uh, I got my papers. Oh, here you go. The The second one is called the caring tongue. The reason I'm looking at my papers because I have stuff wrote the way I want to say it. Okay. The caring tongue is number two. Those with this speech pattern speak truthfully while seeking to encourage. Those that have this tongue, the caring tongue. The caring tongue, it makes you think about what are you saying? You're going to speak truthfully and you're going to speak encouraging words. That's number two, the caring tongue. Number three, the conniving tongue. I'm sure we all have met somebody with the conniving tongue, okay? The conniving tongue, they are filled with the wrong motive. They gossip. They slander, and they have a desire to twist the truth around. You hear me? To twist it around. Now, <clears throat> it says the conniving tongue. Those with this speech pattern are filled with wrong motives, gossip, slander, and a desire to twist the truth around. Let's go to the last one is the careless tongue. It's our form, the careless tongue. Those with this speech pattern are filled with lies. They curses. They are quick tempered with words. Which can lead to rebellion and destruction. Rebellion and destruction. If we want to know more about the tongues, I would really read Proverbs 26 because it tells you all about it. That's what it talks about. And then it's, it have a saying, a little writing in here say what we say probably affects more people than any other action we take. Don't y'all agree with that? What you say can affect more, affect people more than any other action you take. It really can. That mouth, that tongue is powerful. It is not surprising then to find that Proverbs give special attention to words and how they are used. Four common speech patterns are described in Proverbs. The first two should be copied, while the last two should be avoided. So, the control tongue should be something we should fashion ourselves after, and the caring tongue should be something we should fashion ourselves after. But the conniving tongue and the careless tongue, that need to be, it don't even need to be in our life. Because we want to build up people. 
We want to be a devil. We don't want to tear down people. Because remember, we are here to be uh, servants and help us one to another. So we don't want to tear down people. Now, let me just go back again to where I was. Okay, talking about the four tongues. There are the four tongues, the control tongue, the caring tongue, the conniving tongue, and the careless tongue. You can read about all them tongues in Proverbs 26. Then it, I'm, this is what I'm just using for me looking and reading and researching this. God allowed Satan, the devil, to touch all that Job had. God did not put the sickness and the affliction on Job. Satan did it with God allowances. Yeah, God do allow uh, Satan to tempt us. But he know that we can refrain from it. It, it going to make us stronger. It going to build us up. But you know what? It say, but Satan took everything away from Job and his kids, stock, animal servants, etc. But guess what? That was not enough for the devil because Job still was faithful and upright to God. How do I? Because, how do I know? Because Job tells us this. The devil was trying to destroy Job's life without a cause. And God told him, don't touch him. Okay, so it's a, let me tell y'all something. When I was reading this, I got a lot out of this because I learned that, um, listen to this. I learned that Job, I learned that, listen, I'm finna tell you. I got to go down. See, I got to read. Okay, listen to this. El, El, Elihu, Elihu. He's in the Bible, E-L-I-H-U. He told Job that his suffering would not go away healed until he realized it's present sin. Elihu said Job was not suffering. Listen to this. Job in the Bible, you know Job was suffering a long time. He lost everything. Job was not suffering because of sin. But he was sinning because of his suffering. Did it make sense? Job was not suffering because of sin. He was sinning because of the suffering. Why I say that? Because Job's attitude, Job attitude had became arrogant, okay? As he spoke to defend his innocence, Elihu Told Job the sickness or the suffering is not meant, it wasn't meant to punish him, but to correct and to restore him. Okay? And to put him on the right path. His sickness did not come. His sickness or his suffering, it wasn't meant to, to punish him. It was meant to correct him. Sometimes when we are sick, it's to correct us. It's to help us. Okay? You live and you learn. Back to uh, the topic. Control your time. God tells us to live. He wants us to live and not die. In order for us to live, in order for us to be blessed, we have to learn to control our time. I hope it made sense. This is a very, very powerful, a very long uh, message, but we don't have time. But if we have not mastered our tongue, how to control it, we don't have no self-control over our body. Because as soon as something makes us mad, upset us, we're going to fly off the handle with that tongue. We must learn to control the tongue. We must learn to have a caring tongue. We must learn to stay away from the conniving tongue. And we must learn to stay away from the careless tongue. So we want to model ourselves after the control tongue and the caring tongue. We must gain back self-control of our body. And the only way we can do that is to have 
control over our time. Read um, Ezekiel, if you want to, the 16th chapter. Uh, read Proverbs 13. It'll help you more understand this lesson. Uh, and then read Proverbs 26. And that'll conclude it. it it'll take you on out of there. I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. Thank you all for listening. If you are having already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Tap that notification bell. Thumbs up the video. Um, and just let me know what you think. I'm trying to bring more in-depth Bible study lessons to this platform now and also to the other platform because that's what it's about. It's really about spreading the good news. We, as peoples of God, that say we love him unconditionally, that say we appreciate and are so thankful for Jesus Christ giving his life for us, we need to start spreading the word, just like the uh, Jehovah Witnesses do, the Mormons, and all the other peoples. We need to take this word and spread it, share it, tell somebody about the good news. Because that is where our faith grows at. That's how we get stronger and stronger and stronger in Christ. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, please don't forget to thumbs up the video. Leave me a comment down below. I'm trying to be very mild when I speak. Because I'm. it's what the Holy Spirit wants. Because my voice is very loud. And it is a time and a place for that. So, I have to, to manner myself down. So, But God is so good to me. He's so loving and so kind that I am determined in 2023 that I will be better. I will be brighter. I will be more of a giver. I'm going to be a servant. I'm going to be whatever thus says the Lord. And I love you guys. Don't remember that we are all under one God, one nation, one love. Know that God loves us all so much that he gave his one and only son. And I love you guys too. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. I'm going to show you my outfit of the day and we're going to end this video. But I am just so up into the spirit, guys. You just don't know. God has been doing some amazing things in my life right here in my room since 2023 came. When 2023 came in, I actually was in my bed asleep. I had been asleep there since probably about 7 p.m. Uh, New Year's Eve. So I was in the bed. I wound up celebrating nothing. You know, I'm going to show y'all my outfit right quick. I show y'all my little outfit. So this is my little outfit of the day. Just a little dress. Plain little dress. Yep. Just something that I put on to come on here and talk to you guys and share that word with you guys. Whatever the Lord say do, want me to do, I got to do it no matter what. You know, I, I can't worry about it. I think about how people feel about me because people ain't my judge. And they don't have no heaven or hell for me to go to. I'm My goal is heaven. And that's what I'm reaching for. So I'll see you guys on the next video. God bless. I love you. Have a great day. Happy New Year. Mm.